All right, um, from that poem to that resignation. And last week, and God, he is not going quietly. Rob Campbell, Rob Campbell's been talking to anyone away from a microphone within half a mile of him, including us. Um, and Rob seems to be determined to go down in flames as a reborn working class warrior, Rob Campbell, having been fired, not resigned, been fired as chair of the new health agency, Te Fata Ora, which means the new health agency in the language most of us speak, and uh, the Environmental Pro Protection Authority. And as he's gone, he's basically gleefully said, oh, they don't, they wanted me to go because I'm so into co-governance, it's already happening, and Labor's just trying to keep it secret. Well, that's my read of it, and I wonder if uh, the National Party's local government spokesperson, Simeon Brown, who joins us now, agrees. Good morning, Sean. How are you? Good, thank you. So has Rob Campbell's pronouncement since he left indicated that... See, I, I think, Simeon, a lot of people have been sitting there going, we must stop Three Waters because that would be the beginning of co-governance. But Rob Campbell seems to be telling us it is everywhere already. Look, I think um, Rob Campbell is being incredibly honest about uh, what is actually happening behind the scenes. And um, he's effectively saying that uh, co-governance arrangements are, are taking place uh, all over the place. Uh, but basically, this government doesn't want to actually talk about it too loudly. They want to push it through, uh, but they don't want New Zealanders to know what's actually happening. Yeah. Well, me meantime, though, we've got John Tamahiri saying Labor's backing away from co-governance. I'm going to be honest, I well, wonder I, if that is in a shell game. And they've got together and said, will us, urban Maori will get all upset about it and then we'll just go back to it after the election. Well, I think what we're seeing is uh, that they're, they're certainly pushing ahead with it. I mean, there's the Environmental Protection Authority. No one would have known that there was a, a push to make some form of co-governance uh, take place within that system had Rob Campbell not have come out and said that. So the question has to be asked, where else is the government pushing and progressing forward with uh, changes around co-governance? What other changes are they making? Uh, and they should be upfront and honest about it. I mean, National's been clear, we don't support uh, co-governance of public services. And this government, uh, regardless of what they try to say uh, from the, the pulpit of truth, um, actually, they need to be honest with the New Zealand taxpayers and with voters as to what their actual plans are. All right. I'm going to give you an example then of a place that has effectively had co-governance for 20 years. That is Te Papa, the National Museum. It has a Māori chief executive, it has a board, it is run completely as a bi-governed organisation. Are you telling me that National would deconstruct that? No, what we're saying is we don't support the co-governance of public... Well, OK, so, so no, 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 I'm going to come back. So you have co-governance at Te Papa, you don't support it. When you get into government, will you deconstruct that co-governance? Well, what we're saying is we don't support the co-governance of public services. Um, we don't support yeah. the government taking, yeah. taking this conversation in New Zealand. And if they want to continue uh, with public services being co-governed, they need to be upfront and honest with New Zealanders. Now, there, there oh, are... Hang on, hang on, hang on, Simeon. Uh, you're confusing me. You don't support it, which makes me presume if you become the government, you stop it. And now you're saying you'll support it as long as they're upfront about it. No, we're not saying we'll support it if they're upfront about it. What we're saying is if they want to continue with their plans, they should be upfront with the New Zealand taxpayers. So and you wouldn't have any problem with them stuff. continuing with their plans? No, we do have a problem with continuing. So their plans. here's we where we get to it. I'm asking you. Would you take, for example, an outfit like Te Papa and deconstruct its co-governance? Well, look, I'm not the, uh, the person to make those decisions oh. around uh, what happens at Te Papa. But what I'm saying when it comes to health, education, our environmental protection authority, uh, our police system, our, our, our court systems, our correction systems, all well, of these systems... Well, how come Te Papa doesn't fall do there? How can you comment on all of those but not on Te Papa? Well, what the reality, makes the Papa the difference than the court well, system the or the health system? You've got as much portfolio response, shadow portfolio responsibility for them as for anything else. Well, what we've, what 
uh, Christopher Luxon has, has said is that where there have been specific treaty settlements uh, in the past yeah. in regards to specific issues or specific uh, uh, envir- environments, that is one that is separate from whether it is a public service. Okay, do you know if the Te Papa Co governance is part of a treaty settlement or not? Look, I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't okay. know the answer to that question. Okay, so, so what, what I'm I, hearing is that you're nervous about committing a future government to anything as regards to Papa. Well, look, I don't know. I don't know yeah, the history know. around. Okay, uh, all right, but, but I thought I uh, know. you know it's the most glaringly obvious Wellington example of co-governance, and it's been around a long time. That's the point. So, what well, are you right. saying? Look, you my, would my point here is, when it yeah. comes to a, a government department which is delivering public services for all New Zealanders, whether that's uh, corrections, police, health, education. Uh, the Environmental Protection Authority, they're there to serve all New Zealanders and to work for and to make have one system of delivery. Now, what we're seeing is uh, Health Now is going to have two separate agencies uh, with a veto power given to the Māori Health Authority over Health New Zealand. Uh, that's unacceptable. Are we soon going to do the same with the New Zealand Transport Agency? These are the kind of conversations that we are fully opposed to. Uh, but uh, at the same time, we're saying if the government does have an agenda where they do want to have two systems of government for every government department, they need to tell, explain that properly to the New Zealand public. Uh, that's not to say we're not supporting what they're saying. We're just saying they should be upfront and honest, uh, like, like they should be as part of a democratic process. All right. What about Māori wards and local government? Well, what we've, we opposed the government's uh, legislation there, which was to uh, effectively uh, take away the ability for the public to have their say on that. We've opposed the Naitahu legislation, uh, which has now effectively given Naitahu the ability to select uh, their own representatives on the environmental, uh, Canterbury Environmental mm. uh, or the Regional Council there. Uh, and we will repeal that legislation, and as we would have if Road Rua had gone ahead with their legislation too, because the reality Okay, what is, about Wellington? Uh, We've got Māori wards in Wellington, which aren't purely democratic. Get rid of them and the Wellington City Council? Well, we've got a policy process we're going through in regards to whether we, whether we return those decisions back to uh, the, the democratic referendum process. Um, that's a decision that will be made by our spokesperson. Why can't you government. just say, what? Simeon, that the National Party is opposed to special democratic posi- um, um, provisions based well, on ra- based well, on race or legislation- ethnicity? Well, the position in the legislation, which was uh, which was held prior, was that the uh, if a council wanted to propose to have uh, a Maori ward then they would have to go to the public and have a democratic vote on that decision. That was the long-standing position under the Local Government Act. Uh, And some councils progressed with that. Uh, They had a referendum, and sometimes people voted for it, and sometimes they didn't. That was the process that that would go through, and that set up separate boards, just like we have in Parliament with the Maori seats. But what we don't agree with is what we're now seeing is the democratic will has been taken away, we're seeing the Rotorua and other councils proposing to give greater voting power to Māori than non-Māori, uh, and that erodes the principle of one person, one vote. Wouldn't it be simpler, Simeon, if at this time in our history, our parliament enacted legislation to remove ra- discrimination in the provision or in our voting in democratic structures to remove all references or considerations or ethnicity, or race? Well, look, I think that's um, certainly a position that some would take. Is it a position that you would take if you could, Simeon? The National Party's position on uh, is that we're we're not going to be removing the Maori seats. Uh, What we are saying, though, is that when it comes to local government, if that, that it has to be a position of one person, one vote. Okay, why now, isn't is it one person what, and one vote in the New Zealand Parliament? Well, it, current, it currently effectively is that the Maori seats, that, that the, those on the Maori role are not on the general role. They can't vote on yeah. both roles. So we've got a two-tiered, um, so we've that, got that, a that two-tiered system based on race or ethnicity, Simeon. Does the well, National Party really, in principle agree with that? It's not a two. It's not a two-tiered system. You get to have one vote. You get a party vote, 
and then you get to vote on the electorate that you are with. Gosh, why don't we what do it for people from Holland then, or people of Asian descent? Well, what was being proposed by the Rotorua District Council was that effectively uh, the the Maori role would have fifty percent. Those on the Maori role would have would elect fifty percent of the councillors, and those on the general role would elect the other fifty percent of the councillors. Now, what that would mean, because of course there are more yeah, on yeah, the non-Maori yeah, 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 be complete role, rubbish, yeah. Uh, the Maori would have the, those on the Maori yeah. role would have a disproportionate say mm. in terms of the democratic outcome. That's not how it works in our general elections. Uh, even though you, you make a point around whether or not we should have seats based on, and is, you know, certainly a debate to be had around whether that is right or wrong, yeah. but that is not an undemocratic uh, position because it's not splitting and giving more power to one voting role over another. Yeah, I, I hear you absolutely, Simeon. So we, if the National Party were to take power, and it certainly is more iffy than it was when he, uh, in the, over the last couple of months, will you be going and looking at all public institutions to weed out co-governance? Because Absolutely. the indications we have from, from oh, I've got to say, from Rob Campbell is it is not something that's coming, it's something that's already with us. People just don't talk about well, it. Look no, you're, you're, you're absolutely right, and I think that has been certainly one of the incredible admissions from what he has been saying. And clearly, um, the government wanted to keep him quiet, and that's one of the reasons why they acted so quickly to, to, to exit him. But the point I think you make is a good one. We need to have a good look under the hood uh, to actually find out what this government is doing uh, and that's certainly something that I'll be progressing as the public service minister to to ensure that uh, these departments are not going down that pathway. Uh, at the moment, we don't have all that information. We're in opposition. We don't get shared that information. They don't tell us. Um, and the reality is it sounds like uh, what's been happening is ministers have also been pressuring officials to not talk about it. Um, and so we will be certainly having a very good look under the hood to see what's been happening. Did you go to your? Yep. Did good on you. Did you go to uh, the leader's state of the nation speech yesterday? Yes, I was there. Give us seeing he didn't bother inviting us or telling us was on. He doesn't come on this program for some strange reason. I'll give you a couple of minutes to say what did he say to do the sales pitch. Well, effectively, the announcement was two different things. Firstly, we're going to uh, cut. Uh, $400 million out of the bloated uh, consultancy spend-up this government's been spending in all sorts of working groups and uh, and its pet projects. Have you identified what to... those projects are and, and how do you come up with that figure? Oh, look, I mean, there's the, you've seen that there's the, the amount spent on consultants has increased by about one point two from $1.2 billion when this government came to office. It's now over $1.7 billion. Yeah. So what we're saying is we're going to cut that and cap it and we're going to invest that money into uh, a tax credit for working families um, to be able to help them pay for their childcare costs during this cost of living crisis. All right. Nothing for me because my kid's grown up now. Doesn't need childcare. Well, look, there'll be, there'll, there'll be plenty more for you as we get closer to the election, Sean. But what I'm saying at the moment is we're saying we, 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 we want to focus on uh, making sure that working families who are struggling uh, with rising costs are able to pay the childcare costs that they yeah. need. Uh, and to be able to, to care for their family. All I really want is for your leader's office to stop treating us like pariahs would be good, Samir. So, not that I don't enjoy talking to you and the many other national MPs well, that front. I always enjoy talking to you too, Sean. There we go, you see. Tell the boss that. Uh, Simeon, thank you very much indeed for your time this morning. Have a great day. Uh, good to have you with us. That is Simeon Brown, the MP for Pakaranga. He's national spokesperson on local government. Oh, yeah, we're going to have this kind of pogrom and get rid of co-governments. I give him a specific example. I, whoa, I can't commit to that. Uh, and how can we argue against co-governance when we have the Māori seats? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, it's just odd. Um, they're not created either under the Treaty of Waitangi, the Māori seats. Um, oh, good Lord, Sean, let the man speak. I think he had a pretty good crack there. Uh, go, Sean, you have the liars on the run. I don't think Simeon was lying, and I wasn't trying to expose him to lie. I was trying to get him to be specific and commit, because we're in an election year, and it's easy to shoot your mouth off as a politician on election year, but, you know, rubber's going to hit the road sometimes, and this is it. Um, 
Sean, now, this is brilliant. Simon, I hadn't read your text. I'm going to read it now, and you'll see it's like you were ESPing me. Sean, please ask Simeon why National haven't been asking questions about co-governments if it is already in place. They should be fully aware but haven't highlighted it to the public. National are deliberately asleep at the wheel. Well, the thing is, Simon, they're not at the wheel. They're in the back seat and they want to get in the front seat and get the wheel. So you can't accuse them of being asleep at the wheel. They're asleep in the back seat. And Chris Hipkins is at the wheel. Labor's at the wheel and they want to change that. 